Nonetheless, so we go back to the shop. We kind of think it's done and over with, and Todd comes in and says, how do you think you can run with them guys up there? And I said, Todd, I don't know. I said, I'm a crate racer. I don't have any idea. <laughs> and uh, so we loaded up, came up here. I qualified second to dad that year and uh, made both prelims. And I didn't make the big show. I won very good on Saturday night, but had something to remember anyway. Welcome everybody to another edition of a one lap one beer on a Friday night at the 53rd annual World 100. I'm here with Hudson O'Neill and Hudson. A uh, couple other guys haven't done the beer. Really, it's only for me. You got a big weekend, so a big race tomorrow, but yeah. I appreciate you coming on, man. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. Not quite the beer drinker, but I'll do a water. I'll finish the water by the time we roll around. You promise? I promise. All right. And I know, probably a little bummed out tonight. You had a freaking fast race car, got a flat tire, just some sometimes just shitty things happen at the racetrack right? i know it's a suave suave invited me so all day i'm thinking man it'd be great to go out here and talk to him after a yes minute. i was we were, this, we were this close <laughs> didn't happen yeah i just uh oh, and then bobby rolls a six <laughs> we can't get any luck out here right now oh well but oh hey how awesome is this race car for you going into tomorrow night for the finale it's awesome it, it's probably the best race car i've ever had here uh I don't know why, you know, these hunter wipers are a lot different than the 25, uh, you know, whenever you start filling up with fuel and then we're going to put tires on we haven't had on all week too. So that's going to be a different, a different animal, but uh, we're looking forward to it. Okay. Your uh, World 100 history as at least starting it and racing the race isn't very long. You raced your first ever World 100, like what, 16 years and like three days, yep. four days after it. Your second year, you started on the pole, became one of the youngest drivers ever to start on the pole there. Just, I mean, we'll just go with your first ever World 100 experience. How was that? The first ever World 100 experience was, it was my third super race where we unloaded here <laughs> on Thursday night. We went to, I got my first supercar, August sometime and so we go to so my first ever super race. We go to Brownstown on uh, Saturday night. Right. The week, the weekend before this, we unload. Cody Mahoney's there. He wins. I run second. Well, Todd Burns, one who owns Ricky's car. I think you had him on last night, didn't you? Yep. Yep. And uh, so we go on. We run second. We get back to the shop. And the Baltus is Baltus or Appleseed. Yeah. Yeah. Baltus. Yeah. Whatever. Baltus, Baltus Classic. So. We kind of so he's like, hey, we should go to Eldora tomorrow. I was one day not old enough, <laughs> but I lied. Sorry, Tony. Oh, that's but there's a statute of limitations. I, Can't get in trouble now. I lied. I got in here. I was 15 years old, in 364 days. <laughs> that's awesome. And I and we raced and we almost made the show. We were actually leading the heat race and had a battery go bad. <laughs> Nonetheless, so we go back to the shop. We kind of think it's done and over with. And Todd comes in and says. How do you think you can run with them guys up there? And I said, Todd, I don't know. I said, I'm a crate racer. I don't have any idea. <laughs> and uh, so we loaded up, came up here. I qualified second to dad that year and uh, made both prelims. And I didn't make the big show. I won very good on Saturday night, but had something to remember anyway. Yeah, that that's definitely uh, very rememberable. And then also to not even being 16, that's a that's a great story. Okay, we're, I asked Ricky Thornton Jr. the same question, four wide coming out of four seeing the grandstand the lights the fireworks the phones like how how special is that it's cool uh there's no place like this place i really like you get up here the flamethrowers are going off and, and believe it or not whenever them fire bombs go off in the back you can almost feel it you know oh. it, it's uh it, it's an experience like you'll never imagine the fans everywhere all you know all day long they're walking by your pit area asking for pictures asking for autographs it's just a it's a fun time and uh they just the uh, tomorrow is what really gets me to do the flag ceremony and everything yeah. with it, it it's I, I just love it i love it here so you've been around racing your entire life your dad's a hall of famer what was it like going to the racetrack with don every you know as much as you could probably obviously you I think you went to school so you didn't yeah. go every weekend, but I'm sure the summers you were there all the time. I was there all the time. Any chance I got, uh, <laughs> you know, I was a, I was a, what you call a daddy's boy. You know, I've, I was attached to his hip everywhere, everywhere he went and, uh, getting to race with him. I took advantage of it 
uh, or I took it for granted whenever it was happening. Right. And I didn't realize how special it was until it was over. And now I look back on it and I thought, think about how cool it was to be able to race with my dad for the last three years or of his career right. and race on a national tour with him. And, and I'll tell you more than that, what helped was just having him there to mentor me. You know, that helped a lot. What was your favorite moment or memory of, that he was involved in when you were growing up? Probably the first Lucas Oil race I ever won. We were at Magnolia and we had a pretty cool moment on the front straightaway. He came back, you know. Right. I was there sitting on the front straightaway and I seen him riding the four wheeler up. <laughs> and uh, that was that was special. That was probably the coolest moment. We we had some awesome races together. Uh, you know, I beat him in a heat race one time and that comes to mind. And then he is just cool things. Uh, whenever you race together as much as we did, there there's so many moments that happen and you just take them for granted until now you can look back on them and cherish them okay so this is your first season with mark richards the rocket one car you debuted though i think at charlotte last year right with yep. them. be honest how nervous were you going into that weekend uh, because it's like the driver before it was winning pretty much everything for you know four or five years and they you'll know, get this young kid for me yeah. to drive that car it, it was intimidating uh especially coming in to where they had been for so long with the XR1 and, and how everything was going and, and the dominance that they showed right. for so many years. It, it was really intimidating. I, you know, I, I never didn't believe in myself, but I questioned a lot. Am I, am I the, can I do this? Can right. I go out and win 25 races a year and, and, and win national championships? And, and I've been close before, but it's just, uh, I don't know, whenever you get into the situation, you get around uh, successful people like Mark, Danny, <laughs> Joel, Austin, everybody, every, all of them, it's, uh, it, it puts you in a good environment and uh, helps you adapt. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, Speed Weeks went off kind of rough there a little bit, the mm -hmm. pollution, but then got those wins at East Bay and then capping it off of that yeah. fuck freaking, that was probably one of the better moments at Volusia to start pretty much at the tail and get that win. That kind of maybe relieved some pressure for you a little bit? Yeah, no, it was awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll probably never tap, top that one. That was <laughs> that was just one of them things, you know, it uh, everything lined up and we were able to come from the back there, but uh, I don't know. Just to recap the whole year with them so far, it's been it's been awesome to be under the leadership of Mark and, and for them to, uh, or for me to be able to learn from them, it's it's pretty incredible. And, and I'm just, I, I'm the uh, grateful or the, the blessed one to be able to, to have the opportunity to do that. So I would say with like fans and maybe some drivers, like a lot of people don't really know Mark Richards because yeah. he's so determined, kind of runs like a, you know, Patriots type, like the New England Patriots. So yeah. He's like Bill Belichick where he's you know, all serious. In the bathroom of our shop, he's got Bill Belichick quoting up everywhere hanging. <laughs> and if you think about it, they kind of look similar. Like, kinda, and they always have like, you know, that, you know, straight face yeah. there. But he really is like a good guy. And he, he works, so, he tries to work so damn hard in this program. And like, he, I think sometimes he might get a bad, bad rap sometimes. He does. And you know what? Uh, if you ever like well, listen to Michael Jordan, any of his documentaries or anything, he's got, you know, what, being great comes at a cost. And right. sometimes that, that cost is, is being perceived as a bad guy or, or whatever. Uh, you know, he's just determined to, for such a long time. Now, I joke, he's getting softer at his old age, you know. Uh, but well, uh, He's hanging out with young kids. Yeah, though, huh? yeah. Yeah, he's getting softer at his old age. Uh, but he, that guy's the type of guy, he'd do anything. I, I feel like he'd do anything for me, any of my family anything for the guys it, he'd give you a shirt off his back if he had to and and that's a, that's the people I really enjoy being around so I interviewed this guy up here in turns one and two Ricky Thornton's on the stroller again with his kids you two are the top two points getters for Lucas oil season you're gonna be headed to Eldora again in about 30 days everything resets it's something we've never really done in our sports yeah and kind of kind of entertaining and intriguing at least for the fans part of it it's gonna there's gonna be a lot of buzz around it you know i think a lot of people have mixed emotions and maybe i'm the same way but i think that uh, there's no doubt it's going to be one of the biggest events uh lucas hole has ever had all right favorite racetrack other than this lucas right outdoor chris kearns making illinois you like making i illinois. like making but how many times every, have you raced there like, yeah, once once every year we get rained <laughs> out there i haven't raced there since 2018 i make jokes with my girlfriend me and my girlfriend we've been together about five years uh in late 2018 she's never even been there she don't that is but, insane that's because how long schedule yes every, every single year. time in april and is. it get we've rescheduled it several times i like that so See, i'd appreciate it chris kearns would you know build a dome or something 
might be an idea. You had a kind of a cool don't, moment at the dome last Yeah, year. let's not talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Let's keep walking, keep walking. <laughs> I thought you were always like this good, you know, level-headed kid. I guess Don came out of that, yeah. that part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the apple didn't fall far from the tree that day. Okay, so what's the difference of the back stretch going into turns one and two that maybe three and four that, you know, the average race fan might not know? It's definitely really sweeping. Uh, you know, the, the biggest place where a lot of time is gained is down at leaving two down this back straightaway. And a lot of how you enter three, it's it's always got these rollers where where people, where the haulers cross the racetrack, it kind of starts there. And it's got some rollers and you're always bottoming out real hard right there. So it's really tricky. Like that's probably the toughest corner out of everything. Uh, expect Qualifying is really tough over there. Um, but yeah, all, there's a, races are won and lost right through here. So uh, whenever whenever we think about race cars, this is where we think about setting setting it up for. Can you, your dad's had so many close calls at the World 100. He obviously won the Dirt Lane Mile Dream. Great victory lane moment with you two there. He's hugging and he's all fired up. What would it mean though for you, your O'Neill racing family, to get a World 100 because a lot of people from Indiana come to this event to watch it. Yeah, it'd be special. Uh, I don't know, has anybody from the state of Indiana ever won it? No, I don't think world, so. No. Yeah, so that would, would be- Would Essex cry it, first? Essex would. Essex <laughs> no doubt would. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'd be special. My dad, he came this close for several years, leading it several times and would break or get past or whatever. and. And uh, I've just been fortunate. I I've been good here ever since I joined the Rocket One cr group. Uh, I I've had a lot of success here. So uh, hopefully, uh, I always lack a little bit of speed on Saturday, no matter no matter what, uh, how do good I do on the prelim. So hopefully we can uh, change that statistic a little bit tomorrow. What is, you're still young, what is like one thing you, when you look in the mirror like, okay, I need to get a little bit better at, you know, this part of racing. Is there anything that comes to mind? <laughs> yeah. Um, there's times where, like, if we're running a cushion or something and it comes time to move off of it, I don't slow down enough or something. But uh, then you can nitpick yourself all day long, but it's just a lot of things happen so fast, and uh, I just try to work on them as I go. Okay. It happens to everybody in the racing world, especially when you're driving and, you know, racing nearly 100 nights a year. When you go through, like, a little dry spell, I've asked several drivers this, how do you just continue to say positive I'll be because at times it could probably be tough for you guys. well we went two months there all through the summer that we didn't win winter race until just two or two weeks ago at Port Royal so there was it, it was trying uh you know I felt like we had several close calls uh we and some had flats or or ran second led a lot of led a lot of laps and would run second or <clears throat> bless me but just had a lot of close calls. That keeps you going. Whenever you know you're right there and you're knocking on the door, it's. Uh, but I've been in I've been in situations before where you're where you're not running second, third. You're running 12th, 13th, 14th, and it, it can be trying. But uh, you just got to trust in the process. Uh, the, these race cars swing so much throughout a season, and uh, eventually it'll come back to you. All right. Favorite driver growing up, other than your dad, who was like a guy you always. I like Jared Landers. Oh gosh, you might be the only guy to ever say that. <laughs> I was, I was a Jared Landers fan. Him and Dad had a good relationship. Right. And I, I enjoyed watching Jared. He was, he was a gasser. So he was, there was no doubt he was one of the finest people to watch. Okay, Jared Landers, if you're watching this, be sure to check out Hudson O'Neill tomorrow night, World 100 time. I cannot wait. You pumped up? I'm pumped up. I'm ready for it.